Welcome back to the factory. This week for you, I have a new PicoDev prototype, a new piece of hardware, a new platform for PicoDev. We've made some design for manufacture upgrades in our KiCad workflow, and some very exciting news about Raspberry Pi and PicoDev. Let's get started. And first up is a new part. This week, we are prototyping the PicoDev pressure sensor. This is using a MS5637, and this is just a barometric pressure sensor, like on our atmospheric sensor, but this one only measures barometric pressure. And so, of course, you can infer altitude from that as well. Tested with the PicoDev libraries, we just need to panelize it, send it off, and make some guides. You've seen the PicoDev platform for Raspberry Pi Pico. I also spun one up for microbit. So now you can have a microbit project on the bench and just lock it down with your sensors and your prototyping circuit. And you know, you can put it away, get it back out, and everything is still connected and stable. Of course, it looks pretty similar to the platform for Pico because all I really had to do was to remove this footprint for the Pico expansion and add this footprint for the PicoDev adapter for microbit just on the left side of the board here. And the adapter is just held on by two standoffs. And I had my concerns that that would be a little bit flimsy, but actually you can like engage and disengage the micro bit quite happily, just cantilevering off those two standoffs. No worries. Up until recently, to begin work on a new piece of PicoDev hardware, a new PicoDev module, I've just been copying an old project and deleting the old hardware that I don't need, putting in the schematic symbols for the new parts, and then relaying out the board keeping as much as I can, you know, the design decisions around the placement of the holes, the logos, the headers, they can all stay, but it's just really that, that main part in the middle and any supporting components that need rework. To make things a little more scalable and to prevent things like drifting in spec, you know, if you copy one project and then copy it again and copy it again, you've got this kind of, this chain of decisions that might've been made along the way and now one project has drifted in intent from another. So we've made up a, PicoDev KiCad template. And the template just basically captures all those decisions that were already made, you know, the size of the board, the radius of the corners, the placement of the mounting holes, the logos, the headers, the orientation, the placement of the connectors, all of those, all of those decisions are just pre-baked into the template. And we can keep that in our own little private repo so that we, we can make well-considered changes to that if necessary, and then update it. And we won't have that that drift that I was talking about before. And I'm super happy to announce that a bit of a long-term project is drawing to a close. The PicoDev Unified Library now works with Raspberry Pi, and that's just awesome. What that means is the same sensor with the same example code and the same like .py driver modules all work on either Raspberry Pi Pico, Microbit, and Raspberry Pi single board computers. That's not even MicroPython, that's actual Python. Now I realized up until this point, the unified library, I, you know, I was probably leaking like little bits and pieces here and there, but it was probably a pretty opaque topic. So I've put together this nice little diagram just to help out the PicoDev unified library for Python and MicroPython. When you connect, to, when you connect your dev board to a sensor, all you wanna do in your Python code is to call something like sensor.read. You know, this could be like temperature sensor dot get degrees C. And that's the, that's the simple experience that you wanna have in your user code. You want reading that temperature to be really easy. What that will call is in the device module, the device module uh, basically handles that device. It handles the temperature sensor. So it, it will read the data and do any conversions of that raw data. In this case, in my example, I've got something like the read method and setting data equal to read register. Maybe you wanna read data out of a specific register that, and that's meaningful for temperature. And then you wanna return, you know, you, you wanna do some math with that data. In this case, I'm just returning data times 100. Maybe that's the scaling that you need to do. So the device module basically extract, basically abstracts accessing the right registers and doing the right conversions. However, there's nothing there that actually says how to drive those I squared C pins, you know, how to actually package the, the commands that you want to send and send them over the bus. And that's what the unified library is for. It handles the hardware part, 
of the equation. You know, uh, I squared C hardware is different on say a Raspberry Pi single board computer than it is on a Pico. And so that's where the unified library comes in. It's the part of the equation that basically says when read register is called, it's the part that says if Linux do this and if MicroPython do that. So what does that actually mean? What do you need to do to make that work? Well, it seems like the, the way to solve the problem was to make everything, no matter, no matter what development board you're using, to make everything look like MicroPython. So what this means is for the Raspberry Pi, we need a, like a memory read function because this, this laser distance sensor looks like a, a 16 bit address device, which is unusual for I squared C devices, but we'll take it because it's very useful. So the Raspberry Pi needs to be able to perform that operation. The problem is the SM bus, uh, which is, which is I squared C on Raspberry Pi, it doesn't have natively the ability to do that. But with a little bit of digging into other open source projects, shout out to Pimeroni for this one, using their .py file for the same device, I was able to find a nice abstraction for the I squared C read and write. That's these guys here. And this is the part of the equation that allows you to just read and write arbitrary length blocks of data, which is what this device needs in general at startup, you need to do quite a bit of writing to configure the device. So I prototyped these functions just in the device module. I wasn't tampering with Unified, but I prototyped these into the device module to drive the bus directly and it worked. And since that works, the next thing is to just take those working calls and insert them into the placeholder for the MicroPython read from mem. So put the read from mem back into the device module as it was before. And in the unified library, we can branch for Linux or for MicroPython devices and use either the built-in read from mem or use this nice I2C read function from Pimeroni. And at least for the devices that we currently have in works, that was the last piece of the puzzle. So once again, very happy to announce that the temperature sensor, the light sensor, the laser distance sensor, they're all working on Raspberry Pi, Microbit, and Raspberry Pi Pico. By extension, they, they ought to also work on just other vanilla normal implementations of MicroPython, say PyCon boards, etc. And along the way, while all that work was happening, the PicoDev Unified GitHub repo collected its first pull request from a user called Random Smith. So good on you, Randy. Thank you if you're watching this episode of The Factory. And so this pull request is all about the unified library's extensibility for using pins that are not the default pins used for a particular development platform. And last week I mentioned that we did a design update for the motion sensor, the PicoDev motion sensor board for the MPU 6050. You can see here the design revision with the IC the right way up this time and some legends to show what direction is what. And finally, what do you think of this style of content? Do you like to see more of the hardware stuff, more of the design and design choices in the electronic side of things? Do you like seeing the work and the decision making that goes into the code base side of things? Let me know your thoughts. Of course, if there's something you want to see a little closer or if there's something you wish we would cover, just open a thread on the Core Electronics forums. And until next time, thanks for watching.